Okay. Great. Okay. So today we're going to be working with Shiny, as you know. Um, and like I said, this is our third meetup. And today we're going to be doing an example data dashboard where I'm going to like walk you through the main points of Shiny. And we're going to have a chance to try it out and work with a ggplot and allow our users to kind of change some parameters there. And it should be fun. Um, we have, I found some cool data on Tidy Tuesday, which shows the the winners of the Eurovision Song Contest, which is a kind of funny uh, singer, con singer songwriter contest um, in Europe where each country sends one artist or musician to represent them and then they hit big vote. Um, but we'll get there. So first I want to just go over the main parts of every Shiny app and the very basics. So you can make a new Shiny app, which you can do so now because we'll need it. By going to file, um, you can do new project, but I'm just going to do new file, um, shiny web app, zero vision. And then you get this file, which is just .r file, but it already has kind of the, the um, template in here for your shiny app. And one thing that you can do is pick if you want to see your Shiny app in a window or a viewer pane. So you can do that if you already know you have a preference. Yeah, and so then we'll go over the main parts of every Shiny app. First, we have the user interface, the UI. And you can see that in your template if you've just opened a new Shiny app, you can see sort of the one that they give you for the, for the sample app. And here's an example that we did in a previous meetup. Um, the UI is that stands for user interface and it has a couple of functions. So first it collects input from users and you can do this in a variety of different formats based on what kind of input you want to collect. So we've seen um, the select input function. This will give you a drop down list of options. So you have to always give like a unique name for what you're gonna call this piece of input. Here it's greeting. You give it a label, which is the question that your user sees. And then you have um, what choices should show up in the dropdown. And if, if you want to, this is optional, you can add kind of like a behind the scenes, what that should be equal to for R. But if you, Maybe you haven't seen this before, you can try it out on your app here. Delete all of this stuff so that you just have the UI. You can delete everything in the server function. One too many parentheses here. And if you put this input in your, in your UI, then you'll see in your app, and I've got it in my little, um, preview box here that you get this drop down with your options of so world, friends, and people. Now there's also other types of input you can collect. So there's text input, which has the same basic parts. So you always have to give it a label, um, like sorry, an input ID, which is the unique name for it for inside of this app. A label, which is the question that shows up. And um, for this one, you get to put a value, which just shows what is there before people have typed anything. So here we now have this box and you can type, it says type your name because that's the value that we gave as default and you can type <laughs> in your name. So that's text input and slider input is also similar. Here, you just have to give a minimum maximum and a default value because this will be a slider um, that can only take kind of a numeric input. Oops. Had a little typo there. So that should be ID with a small d. So it's a little picky. So this one, this is the slider input. Okay, so that's just one function that, that takes um, that happens inside of the UI is that you can take input. So you can take any or multiple ones of these options. So the drop down list with select, the box input with text input, or the slider with slider input. 
Um, but the UI also has like a secondary function or not secondary, but just a second function, which is that it shows the output to the user once it's been handled by the server. So you get the input from the user in the UI, you can do stuff with it in the server, and then you show that output to the user um, it, within the UI as well. And to do this, you first have to generate and name the object in the server function, which I'll show you in a moment. But uh, the way that you do it within the UI is always in one of these output or can be in one of these output commands. So you have text output if you want to have text, table output if you're trying to show a table, and plot output if you're showing like a GG plot. And these um, arguments that are named inside of the output commands is the name that you gave that object when you created it in the server. So maybe that will become clear um, in just a moment when we look at the server function. But if you look at like our example here, you can see that in this app here within the UI, we have one dropdown where you pick which country you would like to see. And we have one output, which is a plot, which is whatever plot we named metals. And finally, so both of these two things happen within a fluid page command, and there are commas between it, which I just wanted to point out because it's easy to forget. So it always starts with this fluid page. And then you can see like after my input here, there's a comma before the output, which is kind of easy to forget. <laughs> okay, so that's one core component of your Shiny app is your UI, the part that your user sees. Great. Okay, so the second part of um, every Shiny app is the server function. So you can see in your example, again, we had the UI and then down here is the server where I've just kind of deleted everything that was inside of it for now. Look at these comments while I'm in here. And this is the, an example for one of the servers that we had um, uh, in our previous meetup. And you can see it, it always is initiated as a function that has these three arguments, input, output, and session. And what the server does is it takes the user's input, it does something to it, and it returns it as an object um, of this type output, so this output object. Now it's important to remember that input is read only from the server, so only your user can give input, and you can't change it, and Chinese doesn't want to change it. So you couldn't, for example, take the value here and, and add plus one and try to save it as input. You'd have to save it as output. And additionally, it has to be, input has to be read inside of a reactive context. So those include render text, render plot, or just reactive. Here you see we have render text. And this is a reactive content uh, context in that every time you change the value here, so the moment I kind of let my finger off the mouse here, Shiny has to know that it immediately then has to update everything in the reactive context. So it would immediately have to update the value of input age. So you're going to get an error if you try to call input dollar sign anything <laughs> if it's not in a reactive context. And just to clarify here, what's on the other side of the dollar sign is what we've called the object when we made the input. Um, so for example, this one would be age. So if we wanted to work with it here in the server function, maybe we wanna do output older and make it equal to render um, oh gosh, maybe render text. And we would then have to, we would have to call it as input age, dollar sign age. So it's whatever ID you've given it, basically, was my point there. Okay, you can also see here, this is an example from last time where we made, oops, sorry, where we made a, a summary table. So we read in some data from GitHub. And we did some wrangling to it. So we added a new column where we re-labeled um, our factor levels. We grouped and we made like a summary table. So this has nothing to do with input or output. So it just kind of lived in the, in the body of our server function here. But then as soon as we want to manipulate input and create output, we need the reactive context. So we have here, we've opened render plot. 
called summary table and that allows us within the summary table to filter by participant input. Okay, so again, because this is a reactive context render plot and in the input is given by the user and we've named it country. And then as soon as they pick an option that will update everything that's in this kind of reactive context. And we've saved this to output dollar sign metals so that we could call it in the um, UI as something like, yeah, um, something like plot output loads metals. And I wanted to show this example because you have to think about in the reactive context which steps you want to be repeated every time a user changes a value, right? So I wanted to make this summary table once and I, it doesn't need to be updated then every time something is changed because I would have to read in the data from GitHub every time. So instead of doing that, I've made the summary table once and then I've just filtered it in an additional step within the reactive context and at the same time made the plot. Okay, so, so that, yeah. Sorry, Kana, um, before you move on to like, too much with this example, there was a question if um, input dollar sign age um, won't be equal to output dollar sign age. So for the previous example. Um, no, so input dollar sign age, you, you would get that from, you will get that value from including this slider in your um, UI, but output age does not exist right now. So output is something you would have to make with a name. And if you, you could give it the same name, but you would have to make it. So just because here there's an input item being created by the slider, there is no output object until you do something in the server function that would create that object. So for example, here I've made the output object called metals by rendering this plot, but there is no, there wouldn't have been an output um there's not like it, every input doesn't have an equivalent output you have to okay so sorry if it's a little bit fast um if you weren't at the previous ones i wanted to kind of just go through the basics a little bit quickly so that we can try it out ourselves so i hope that um you're still with me but feel free to put more questions in the chat if you're not so that was like a basic little overview of or actually a pretty pretty quick and in-depth overview of the user input function or the user UI um, part of your Shiny app and the server function of your Shiny app. And then you always end this by running Shiny app and combining the UI and the server together. And also don't forget to load your packages. <laughs> so that's just part three is very, very easy compared to the other ones. It's just running the Shiny app and combining the UI and the server. So basically all of shiny programming is about this interfacing between the input and the output and what you can, what shiny will and won't do to input and output. So two more little theoretical points before we um, try it out ourselves. The concept of reactivity. So I talked a little bit about these reactive contexts and how they allow R to automatically update a value whenever a user changes an input. So that could be every time they drag a slider in the typing in, so the text input box, every time they type one more letter that will kind of relaunch anything that's um, in a reactive context with that input. And there are options like render text, if you're trying to return text to the user, render plot, um, or just reactive. And most of this reactivity happens in the server and it's often where input is turned into output. You have to remember that input is read only and if you try to change it, it will probably, um, you'll probably get an error. So I like to say, leave that to the user to change the input. And output also has to have a reactive context. So you can't just assign a string to an output um, to an output value like this, like you might think you could just write hello world and call it your greeting, but you cannot do that. You have to have it in a render, oops, in a sort of rendered, in a rendered text. So it has to be in a reactive context as well. 
And just one little terminology thing and input and output that depend on each other are considered to be in a reactive dependency. So here the output metals is in a reactive dependency with input country. Just because if you change in the input for country, it changes the output for metals. That's kind of like a terminology thing. Okay, this last point, and then please let me know if you have questions. Um, Shiny is based on what's called declarative programming, which is a little bit different to R, which is imperative programming. So, um, and I showed this last time, but I'm gonna go over it again. So in R, if the kind of mentality is, if you paste, say you try to tell R, paste together, hello, and the user's name, and then name it this variable. So I'll put greeting. That would be kind of your intuition about how R would do something, which would be imperative. But Shiny has the mentality of like, if and when you need to send output dollar sign greetings, output greeting to the browser, this is how you should do that. So if Shiny never sees a need to um, create this object or to send it to the to the UI or anything, it might ignore it. So you could have like straight straight up errors in there and it might not really notice because it will only run it when it needs to run it. So for example, in R we'll throw an error if you misspell a variable name. So if you misspell greeting as gretting, <laughs> you'll get an error. But Shiny will have more the mentality of like, okay, if I ever need to use gretting, then I know how to make it, not a problem. And I guess you just don't want any output, that's fine. Um, this also means that in R, the order of lines matters, whereas Shiny uses these reactive dependencies to look for what it needs in that moment and then, and then create it. And that is also why functions and kind of writing in a function mentality um, is more important in Shiny, but also just in general, why Shiny requires a little bit of a different intuition than R programming. Um, but we're gonna work on that today. So we're gonna try it out ourselves since I know the previous two have been a little bit theoretical, but are there questions about the basic? Um, so what I just covered, I'm just put it in the chat. Yeah, I don't see any questions right now, but as Kyla said, just put it in the chat. Great, okay. So I'm gonna to try to lead you through um, an example that we can work on together. And for this, like I said, I'm gonna use this Eurovision um, data set from Tiny Tuesday. So let's read it in. I've given you the link here. And I, right from the get-go, I'm just gonna um, filter it to be only the grand finale results because we're not um, so interested in the, the previous rounds. So run this and make sure your Shiny is not running because if Shiny is running, even just in the preview pane here, um, it's gonna it's gonna keep your R busy. So make sure you close any Shiny that might be running. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, so there's a lot of information in this data set, but. The only thing that we're really interested in is that like it has the year of the of the contest and it has the country that the artists are from and how many points they got and what place they placed so rank um just as a number here so the first place was ukraine this year the second place this year was united kingdom and the third place was spain and then it shows you that like Italy came in six and France came in 24th and Germany came in 25th. Okay, so there's a bunch of other stuff in there, but those are the only columns we're really interested in. And I wanna think about how we could let a user of a Shiny app manipulate this data set to show different kinds of plots. Um, so one thing I thought was maybe you'd wanna see, okay, for a given year, what were the top three countries, for example? So maybe this would make more sense with um, greater than or equal to three, for example, but less than four also works. So you can see that like this year, the top three countries, <laughs> this big data set was United Kingdom, Spain, and Ukraine. You could look last year. So maybe that's something we could let our user decide is what year they wanna look at. 
2021 was Italy, France, and Switzerland. That's kind of the, the question or the, the design that I um, propose for our Shiny app is that we allow our users to pick what year and then to tell us how many countries they want to see. So top three or top five, so on. So I've gone ahead and made a little plot um, that we can use for our app, where again, you see this filter command that we just created here. And then based on that, we make a little bar chart where the y-axis is the total amount of points that the, that the artist scored. And the x-axis is the order or the artist country ordered by descending number of total points. So again, this is year 2022. So we see Ukraine had the most points and then United Kingdom and Spain. So that'd be kind of cool if we could let the users pick a different year or pick to show more bars on their chart. Um, I also went ahead and made this a little bit prettier. So I added like, I made each um, bar have its own color but I didn't want the legend, so I took out the legend. And then I just added a very basic X and Y axis label and took away the gray background here so that we end up with um, this bar chart for this year. And one thing I wanna point out right away is that when you work with Shiny, you have to think about what colors you're using. So I've decided just to stick with the ggplot default colors because they are really, you can go up to like a lot of levels of a factor. Um, so I'm not going to try and change any colors here. I'm going to use the G plot, but you can also use like palettes, custom palettes, or um, yeah, there's a lot of options there. But we're just going to use the basic colors. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is take a little break and allow you to try to add this graph with this this code into your Shiny app, and just have it be shown to the user. Um, there's a couple of tips here, and then I put a couple of spoilers. I'm not going to show them on my screen, but if you get stuck, there's a couple of little spoilers that should help walk you through it. Um, and of course, just put things in the chat if you need, um, if you get stuck on anything. And I think I'll wait a few minutes, and then I'll start to quietly type um, my answer into my Shiny app. So if you get stuck, or you're just you know tired of day of work, and you just want to watch me do it, then you can do that. But I'll keep my my microphone off so that people can also work on their own for a few minutes. And just let us know in the chat when you have it done, all right? Okay, so I hope I've given you a chance to try it. Um, feel free to let us know in the chat if you need another minute. Um, but I'll go over kind of what, what I did here. So we need to do a couple things. We need to make sure that the tidyverse package was loaded. So I added that. Um, I loaded the tidyverse package into our kind of our app template. And then the first thing I wanted to do was make sure the data was in here somewhere. So that happened inside the server function. And just like in the example I showed earlier, I wanted to have that not be in a reactive context. I wanted it to be just in the just hanging out in the, in the body of the server function. Um, so that we could use it in a reactive context, but we don't have to reload it every time the, the user changes the input. Uh, then I've taken this code, which is what we just wrote kind of in our normal R environment. And I've wrapped it in render plot so that I can make an output. So remember that if I just try to do this without the render plot, it's not going to work. Um, I think Shiny will complain if we do that. Oops. So if we just try and make a plot and, and call it an output, I don't believe it's going to do that. Yeah, so it, the error here is actually helpful. It says, did you forget to use a render function, <laughs> which is exactly what we did. So let's put that back. So we have render plot. And then I've saved this to an output, which I've named Euro V bar, just to show that it's a Eurovision bar chart. And then the only thing left to do was to show the, the plot output to the user. So I've gone back up here in the UI and I have shown the plot output that I've called Euro B bar. Okay, so there's a key on our in our GitHub as well. 
that has the code in there. And here were the main points. So we had to load in the data that in a way that wouldn't have to be reloaded. We made the graph in a reactive context, saved it to output and showed it to the user. Okay, so now we have our plot, um, but this shiny app is super boring, right? It just shows a ggplot, <laughs> which is totally non-interactive. So I want to let the user pick what year they want to see, and then they can look at the bar graph that matches that year. So I wanted to see just kind of like what years, um, oops, my R crashed in the meantime, what years are even present in this data set. We made that. And we see that the data that we have here ranges from 2004 to 2022. Um, this could have been a slider input, but when I was kind of playing around with this data, I realized that in 2020, because of the pandemic, there's actually, there wasn't a contest. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll make it a drop down list. That way um, we don't have to show anything for 2020. And so we don't have to show like a blank plot for 2020. But if you want to try making it slider, you, you totally can. Um, so let's go back to our app and let's take another few minutes to add an input that allows you to um, pick which year you want to see and then also update our plot so that it, it actually shows that year. Okay, so I hope that gave you a few minutes to try it out. Um, so I've done two main additions here to our app. First is that I have allowed the user to put in the input. And if you were watching when I did this, um, when I first only had this part, oops, done. So at first I just did, I add this, and then I wanted to check that it worked and I hadn't introduced any bugs. Um, so I think with Shiny, it's really important to be iterative. So first I just created the, the input and you can see at first it doesn't do anything. It just allows you to pick what year you want to see, but it doesn't change anything in the plot. Um, but, but making that change is really easy. So here we already have like a filter condition inside of our render plot, and we can replace this value of 2022 with the um, input for year. And as soon as we do that, um, then this becomes a working input that does change the plot output. All right, so um, great. <laughs> I want to actually add another user input here. So it's going to be a similar process. But what I want to do is um, let the user pick how many winners they want to see. So right now, it's always three. But maybe we want to allow them to pick more. Um, first, I need to find out how many, uh, how many ranks there actually are. I don't actually know how many countries participate in the in the finale. So I just did a little um, ggplot here, or not ggplot, sorry, um, just a little wrangling here where I group by year and just want to see like the minimum maximum values, actually probably the maximum one of suffice for us here um, in the rank column. So you can see that it seems like it started with 24 and it goes up to like 26, 27, so now it's 25. So I would say anything up to 24 is kind of safe. Um, but you can pick how you want to do it. So if you want your, you know, maybe you don't want to have them be able to show the top 24. Maybe you want to limit them to the top 10 or something. You can do that because I think um, a slider input would be nice. Then we have two different types of input. We'll have the drop down box and the slider. So go ahead and include this information. So make another input where they put how many countries they want to see and also update the plot again with that information. Okay, so let's see how we did that. Um, so I added here a slider input complete with its following comma, which is hard to remember. Um, and uh, so I put the idea is rank since that's kind of what it was called in the data set. I just gave it a label. I find it hard to make creative <laughs> questions here. 
And then the minimum and maximum, I wanted to limit it to 10, just based on my feeling that more than the top 10 is not interesting, but you could have done as many as you wanted. Um, and I took a little look at the help docs there for a moment and took away the tick marks because otherwise they look, I'll show you. Um, they kind of like tick at the numbers, but also in these sub numbers, which didn't really make sense for rank. So I decided just to take the ticks off. Yeah, just had a smooth slider, but that's just, I was just having fun there. But basically I, I collected this input called rank. And then down here in the same filter command, I use the input to limit the number of countries that are shown in the ggplot. And here I changed it to less than or equal to um, so that we had the correct amount. Otherwise, before we had less than only, and then that would have made one too many um, countries show up. Uh, yeah, there's a question about if this is my normal speed when working on a Shiny app. Um, I guess this is my normal process in just kind of doing things like first trying to show the plot and then trying to add in the inputs um, and then making sure that they work and so on. But I'm sure the speed varies very widely based on how how many shiny apps you've made and how often you make them and how sure you are about what you want to do with your data. Okay. Now I want to oh yeah and I wanted to um, I noticed when I did this previously that when you show a lot of countries um, the the labels overlap. So if you are having the same problem, you can I kind of put here the code for adding a theme command to the ggplot just to make those um, country labels be on a little tilt. Let's see. Okay, so this will just tilt the axis text just so that they fit. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move on to the next part, which is adding a reactive title. So you can see there's no title on the graph here. Um, and I wanted, I did it on purpose because I wanted to make a little text object where we, it could be like automatically updated for the year you wanna see. So let's take a second and do that. Um, and all I want to do there is like render some text where I have a title like the Eurovision <laughs> context contest placement in whatever year. So when you change this, the title should change and showing the top however many countries which should change when you change the slider. Alrighty, so for this part, what I've done is um, created two output objects just because I this is the easiest way to do it on two lines. Um, both are inside of this render text function so that I can use the input as well. And then I use the paste um, command, which is just combines two strings with a space. So I have the string Eurovision finale or final, whatever, um, finale. And then I give the year and the subtitle I have showing the top, whatever rank countries in terms of total points. So you can see that um, these are reactive to these two inputs. And then of course to show them, I put them here, text, output, title, and subtitle. And I put them on top of the ggplot so that they would show up on top of the ggplot. So that's why they're kind of here in the UI. Alrighty, so now we have like a working shiny app here. It does pretty much everything we want it to do. So you can change the year, you can add more countries um, or go down to just two, the top two. And, but it's, um, you know, it's not, it's kind of like a big long list of just stuff on top of each other. And that's where the layout comes in. So I'm just gonna show you a tiny bit about the layout. Um, today as kind of our final thing about this shiny app. Um, but the first thing we can do is add a title with the title panel object. This goes in the UI and you can just put any text in there you want. So um, for example, we can have Eurovision results. I'm gonna put it right here at the top, title panel, Euro, I'm just gonna do the same thing, Eurovision results. Don't forget the comma. 
then you get this nice huge title at the top. Okay, so that's title panel. It's really easy to use. And we can also add a sidebar and a main panel. And for this, we're going to use a command called sidebar layout. And that will encompass most of what's in our UI right now. So everything except for the title right now is going to be inside of this um, command called sidebar layout. And within that, we will then also have a, we will designate which part goes in the sidebar panel and which part goes in the main panel. So the sidebar is the small one and the main one is the big one. And so let's just take a look for a second at the um, shiny template that we got when we first opened this app. So when you, when you first open like a brand new shiny, you get this example here. And it also has a title panel and then it has this sidebar layout. And then um, it tells you which one should be in the sidebar. So the sidebar panel and what should be in the main panel. And then I'm pretty, this, this belongs to this. So this is all within the sidebar layout. You have these two sections. Okay, so just for the last thing for today, I'll give you just a couple of minutes to try and put the existing code that we have into this layout so that it shows up um, with a sidebar. Okay, and just since we're running out of time, I'll go ahead and show. So I've just wrapped everything except for the title panel in um, sidebar layout. And then I've selected for the sidebar panel, um, the select and the slider inputs that we had. And if you were watching me uh, live, you saw that I first forgot this comma after the sidebar panel, which is what threw that error initially. So you do have to make sure you need commas or that you have the comma there. It's a little tricky about Chinese because you don't need it in the server function, but you need a lot of commas in the, in the UI. Um, so I put everything in a sidebar panel that had to do with input, and I just put the text outputs and the plot in the main panel. And for this, I'm going to have to um, switch to sharing my whole screen so that you can see. Um, so now when I run this in the bigger format, it kind of adjusts to the width. Can you see the um, Shiny app on the kind of full size now? Yeah, we can see it. Oh yeah, so now you can see that there's like a sidebar panel where this stuff shows up on the side and then the plot shows up kind of in the middle and the title takes up a space over the entire um, width of the screen because I left that out of the sidebar part. Okay, so let me switch back to sharing only my R. Um, that is actually it for today. There's a plenty of steps that you can probably imagine that we could use to beautify this app. Like I thought spontaneously, it would be kind of nice to like assign each country a set color. So we can make a whole column with hex codes and then that country could always have the same color when it, whenever it shows up, even if it's in different years. We could also adjust like the width of the input or the formatting. Um, we could add more details if we wanted like a summary table. But basically, just in a short amount of time, we've made this functioning Shiny app with two different types of input um, that changes the speaky plot to show different plots based on what the user um, wants to see. Yeah, so I hope you got something out of it. Um, and I hope that you can now make some Shiny on your own. And I'm sure we'll have more about Shiny coming up um, in future meetups. So keep an eye on.